Well, hello everybody out there in Condi land. Uh, good to be with you again. Today we have one of our regulars, uh, Craig Mertens, with us. Uh, Craig, are you okay? Go ahead and I am doing, split screen. I am doing, doing fantastic. Uh, you might hear my coworker, Cupcake, all, aka The Cake, joining us if there's a delivery here. So don't be alarmed. This is 11 pounds of Jack Russell um, Chihuahua Pure Energy. Um, so Hopefully, hopefully Cupcake will continue her nap, but just in case, I'll give you a heads up. Yeah, it looks like you've changed your bedroom a little bit. Um, got you a you know, professional office with um, the amenities out there. Yeah, my, I've so, slowly taken over our guest bedroom and turned it into an office. And my wife has completely given up trying to maintain it as a guest bedroom. So I even have my music musical equipment back yeah, there my cool, guitars cool. and all that in here and uh, I even have a vinyl cutter that's in the closet over there which I'm using for my own enjoyment I just couldn't be without a vinyl cutter just for doing frivolous t-shirts and decals couldn't help myself so I got one of those one now. of these days you need to invest in sublimation I'm going to because my next investment is a heat press so uh yeah my wife wants to get a little side hustle going so we'll get I a, we'll get a sublimation printer. Well, folks out there that aren't familiar with this, uh, Craig used to be with Digital Art Solutions. Digital Art Solutions merged with who? Inksoft. Huh? Inksoft. And now Inksoft has a much broader offering, putting, putting more of the puzzle pieces together to help folks with their graphics uh, workflow, um, and, and what Craig is going to talk about today to a large extent is Corel centric. Um, Corel is our Swiss Army knife uh, for, um, I guess, both Mac and PC. And um, is there much difference between the Mac version and the PC version? They're identical. They copy feature for feature. And their Mac version has gained quite a bit of traction, actually. Um, and I think that has to do with you know, the learning curve, I think, you know, we're, we're kind of agnostic to your graphics program now. So one of the things that's cool about the new graphics flow technology, it works great with the Adobe products as well. And that's kind of new. We've always had things that worked with Adobe, but now it doesn't matter. You can use the Adobe products, Illustrator, Photoshop, or Corel. It's up to you. Mac Windows goes, goes either way. And also just a little clarification on the name. So the digital art solution still exists as a brand, but the, the formal company name is now Graphics Flow, which matches up with the technology that you guys are going to see today. So Okay. So why do we do these webinars or lives? Very simple. Um, the, the key to life, the secret to life is good looking graphics that can be done quickly. Um, and with the huge library of graphics that Craig has, you have a good starting point. And if you happen to be using Corel, well, you've got great flexibility to, to do all sorts of magic in Corel um, to change that artwork to fit the client's needs. So it's, it's really all about delivering high value artwork on great looking substrates. And so Craig is just going to jump in and help us with this. Perfect. Yeah. And I, you know, to your point, David, you know, one of the things people don't buy products per se, they buy the graphic, right? So it's the, you know, if, if you're faced with, you're in a, a gift shop and you're buying a new tumbler, right? We just went through this, through this with my kids. We were at the Timberline Lodge in, uh, Mount, in Mount Hood, Oregon, where they kind of modeled the, the shining uh, exteriors from, and the kids wanted to get, um, they wanted to get new tumblers. And watching them go through the process of picking out the graphic on the tumbler was it was fascinating to me because they were really I mean I was like come on guys it's a tumbler you know what well, dad you know it's gotta be the right so they picked out the one of course with the, sh the licensed shining theme on it you know and so it's it's graphics that you know drive the industry and one of the things that we've seen and I think it's really important is you know David and I were talking about it's an, it, the age of the internet is upon us you know it's kind of a funny thing to say right because internet's internet's been around a long time. But consumer purchasing habits and the way people interact with each other has just changed so much. You know, I prior to the pandemic, uh, never did Zoom meetings. I never did go to meeting. I never did Google Meet. We, I'd call people on the phone or we'd meet with folks at a trade show. And in a sense, it kind of somewhat limited, you know, my connectivity to people. Um, but now when I do a meeting with somebody, I do it with Google Meet or go to meeting or Zoom. And so we're talking like this face to face it makes it more personal and it allows me to have more, you know, interactivity 
um, via video than just a phone call, right? Or being busy at a trade show and have 27 people come up to you at a trade show and they're all fighting for your attention. So what, we, what we've seen in, the, in this new era is that people are embracing technology and folks, especially folks that are a little bit more mature, which is a nice way of saying older, <laughs> <laughs> are now open, more open-minded to technology because they've kind of been forced into this new era of internet technology. And Dave and I were even talking about, you know, what's the future of trade shows going to be? Because it's not as important to go to, to events in person as it was prior to the pandemic. So kind of where we're getting to this is with this is this whole idea of getting ideas in front of your customers graphically. If, if you think about it right now in the current marketplace, David, what are we all facing? We're facing supplier shortages. You know, you have container, you know, we're, we're, a lot of our industries are very dependent on imported products. You have, you know, containers full of products backed up at the ports. Um, some of the, the blank wholesale suppliers, and especially in the wearable side of the industry, um, you just can't get inventory. I talked to a client today and she had a, a their, her local team uh, won a conference championship in football and she's excited and she has an order for 200 hoodies. And she said, I'm going to spend a good portion of my morning tracking down the blanks. And we just told the customer, you don't get a choice of the brand. You don't get a choice of the chemical composition or the, the fabric composition. You get a choice between colors and you can have navy or Oxford gray. You know, we, we've all become so, you know, reliant on suppliers being able to deliver next day that this is kind of a new, you know, unfortunate ph phenomenon in our industry. And so think about it before an order can be processed and before you can secure an order and begin the production process, what's the one thing that you have to get out of the way? Graphics. Nothing goes yeah. anywhere till you have the graphics. Sucks, let me, let me know, jump in and say down. here at Condi, um, I went ahead and saw the challenges and I went ahead and ordered way early for Christmas. Um, all the inventory pretty much is here. Um, you, did you? And um, that was you, smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah that and was so, really smart. So we're in good shape. Some products that are made in USA, well, they're made here, and so we're waiting on deliveries of those products. But, but to a very large extent, um, you know, like the drinkware, all set to go. Um, and and the good news is we didn't have to have a mid-Christmas price increase. We have the inventory and, you know, over $200 orders, it's free shipping on, nice. on almost any any item we have. So um, that's for to everybody out there in Condi land, you know, we're good. But I'll tell you, when it comes to like Christmas ornaments, you need to go ahead and order right this yep. second. For sure. Yeah, and you were you had a lot of foresight into that, and I think a lot of a lot of folks were just kind of shocked by that. And it used to be, you know, you would talk about, um, you know, what color T-shirt, or what 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 uh, you know supplier do you want, and then it became, you know, what level or grade do you want. Now it's like what color do you want, right? And so, you know, you know, getting that artwork side of things handled, you know, is is really important. And you also want to create artwork that's unique and interesting. And not everyone has the graphic skills to do that. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys kind of like a, a workflow that we would do in terms of a, a, a prospecting campaign. If we were, cause what's the one thing everybody wants to do right now? Everybody needs new customers. And one of the, the things that you'll find in your business, regardless of what level you're at, you know, if you're a small home-based business or if you got a shop or you're a big internet company, it doesn't matter. The, the one thing that you're going to, you're all going to experience is that graphics are what's going to sell the product. And if you have the right graphics and you have something that looks cool, it will sell. If you have something that looks lame, it will not sell. And so getting the graphics right is, is really important. And not everyone has the ability to do that in-house and, and not everyone has the patience, time and, you know, and, and uh, willingness to go through that traditional learning curve. We don't need people to be graphic designers, but you know, we always, we always talk about like design templates as a placeholder for a fresh idea and it's just waiting for your own creativity. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to create a little, um, uh, uh, kind of a, a case study in prospecting. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see my computer screen. And then I am going to turn off my talking head and I'll put that back on later. And now you should be seeing just my screen. So what, what you guys are seeing on my screen is what's called Graphics Flow. Graphics Flow is a web app and you need three things in order to access Graphics Flow. 
The first thing that you're going to need is an internet connection. The second thing you are going to need is going to be a web browser. And then the third thing that you're going to need is some kind of editing program to take the graphics that are part of graphics flow and to, to edit the files, localize them, we call it, you know, take it from one thing and convert it to another, change text, change clip art, maybe incorporate photos, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, we don't care if you're Mac, we don't care if you're Windows. We can do this on our phone. We can do this on our iPad. We can do it on our Mac computer or Windows computer makes no difference. And so I'm currently logged into my graphics flow account right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to my art. Anybody that's on my team can be sharing this same portal. And so when I add people to my team, they have their own uh, logins, they have their own email addresses and we can all collaborate. And so one of the things that we can do is if there is a volume of designs that we have done in the past and we wanna curate those designs into collections and to show clients the portfolio of our work, it's super easy to do that with Graphics Flow. And here's why. If, if I go to Graphics Flow, I can upload my own artwork. So I can create a folder. In this case, I've created a folder, it's called Image Previews. And what, what this is, these are examples of common image formats. And here's an SVG file, here's a PNG file, uh, Photoshop file, PDF, EPS file. Um, here's an embroidery file, here's a DST file, JPEG. Um, even um, uh, a, a Corel Draw file. Okay, so if you if you click on one of these files, let's say this Adobe Illustrator file right now, you notice that you can see a full screen preview of the file, so you can really see what's going on. So from a proofing point of view, you know if you know if there's going to be an issue in the file. And what's kind of neat about this is if you don't have Adobe Illustrator on your system, hey, you can still see the file. Um, the little checkerboards indicate that it's transparent, so the background is knocked out. That comes into play when we want to change background colors to do a presentation to a client. Um, you'll notice that I have all my production data for the affixed to the file. So I have like Pantone colors, for instance, if I need to hit specific Pantones for a school, printing dimensions, if this was going to be a sublimatable file, I can put my imprint type sublimation or white toner printer. And then you notice there's tags here. And so the reason we do tags, and this was pointed out to me, and I had to kind of get used to this, is in the modern area, era of file management, the directory structure isn't so important. What's important is the file tags. Because if, if I take this, I'm gonna go to list view. If I take this whole folder, I can go over here in graphics flow and I can edit tags and I can edit all the different tags that I would need in order to locate these images. So for instance, I could put a sales rep in there. I could put the company name in here. Central High School is the name of the account. I could put you know, Panther or Jaguar, because we're not really sure if it's a Panther or Jaguar. You know, I, I put a keyword football and, and sports and mascots in there. So it makes it really easy for me to file, find these files. And so if, if I go over here and type in the word central and I click on that and I want to begin editing this Corel Draw file right here, I would just simply click on the file. I would go download and that file is going to become downloaded right directly into Corel. And at this point, I'm using my Smart Designer add-on software for Corel. This is a very well-known product of ours. And I could just localize this file real simply. I could just go over here and just say, you know what? Let's go and edit the template and let's change the text here. And we're gonna localize this to have it say Cougars. Here we go. We just did this right from the cloud. And we're gonna have it say Cougars and we're gonna say, change this to CHS, boom. And we're gonna click on U for uppercase. And maybe we're gonna download a, an image of a, a cougar to put in there. And so we're just gonna download that cougar real quick and double click on that cougar. Cougar goes into the file. We wanna change the colors. I mean, this is how easy it is to create art. And I'm doing this for my own file. So this, this file, the genesis of this file was originally a, uh, you know, a file from, you know, graphics flow, but let's pretend for a second that this was my own file that I'd previously created. I can do this on all my own files as well. And one thing I definitely want to do here is I want to reduce my colors here. So I'm going to do a color reduction. And if I want to match colors to a specific palette, like Pantone Go, um, because I've printed out a color chart for my sublimation printer for Pantone Go, super easy to change colors. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click uncheck match tints because when I change the parent color, I want all the shades of that color to change as well. So I'm going to change this to reflex blue and it's going to change all the shades. So, you know, editing and localizing these files 
is quite simple when you're running the Smart Designer add-on software for Corel. And one of the other things that I can do is, you know, I can easily mock it up onto a product and create like a little virtual sample. We'll do that when we do the actual project, we'll, we'll do that part. But I just wanted to show you from the point of view of just managing your artwork, this is just a really great way to manage your art. And the other thing is once you have it in here and you have it uploaded, it's safely, securely stored in the cloud. So if you have the uh, unfortunate um, you know, problem with the computer blowing up, we don't have to worry about it. Um, we also have the ability to share it with our coworkers. We could do that on our phones. And here's a great example of that. Um, if you're at a high school basketball game and you're talking to maybe one of the other parents or, or somebody next to you and they, you guys are chit-chatting and they ask you what you do for a living. You say, oh, well, you know, what, you know, my kind of my side hustle is I've decorated apparel business and we do custom apparel. We do sublimatable products, uh, promotional products. Um, right now we're really focusing on gift items for Christmas. Oh, really? Could you do a Christmas tree ornament for me for our, uh, you know, we're going to order a whole bunch of these for our, our, our church um, uh, group over at the church for the choir. I'm like, yeah, I could totally do that. This is, well, let's pick out a graphic, right? Well, you can right on your phone, you could go into your graphics flow account and just go to design ideas and you could just type in, you know, Christmas. And if you type in Christmas, you know, anything that's going to have to do with Christmas is just going to pop up and then you could just take that design and localize it, you know, any of these designs. So you can make that into an ornament design. And so the, the concept here is being able to empower yourself to show artwork to, to your clients. So what would you do in that case? Um, you just say, Hey, um, Anita, what's your, what's your email? Oh, okay. Let me, let me get on my phone real quick here. And then you go on your phone, you search for Christmas. Um, you pick out five or six designs and you subscribe Anita to an art approval. And, and I, you tell Anita, Hey, Anita, um, go check your phone. And there she's staring at the artwork and she can collaborate with you in real time. So let's, let's kind of do that. It'll be kind of fun. Let's go over here to art approvals and I'm just going to create a new one real quick. And so we'll just say create new. And then we'll call this Christmas designs. You want to spell it right. And then you would add an email here to that person. And you can put any kind of message you want in the email and you can just say right here, Hey, Anita, Anita, pick out your favorite design, pick out your favorite design. And I can mock it up for you. And she might, you know, want to have a photograph on there. Okay. And I'll just send this. So this is the body of the email. Anita just got a, a message uh, to check her email and she can look at this particular web page we're creating. And then I have her set up as an approver so she can actually approve the design. But, you know, if she was like the, an underling, so to speak, we could limit her to being a commenter or what we could do is we could just send out this link right here, post this to Facebook. Here, we'll do that. I'm going to copy this link. And I think we have the ability here in Google. We'll do this at the end of class, but I think we have the chat function. Yeah, we do. So I'm going to chat this over to you guys. And you guys, as we add art, you can follow along. You can play with the art. This is a generic link. You guys can't comment. So you have to behave. You don't have to behave because you can't comment. Now, if I sent you, if I, I subscribed you to this, then you could comment and that would show up on here live and could be interesting. All right. So let's add some art. So I'm going to go over here and I could go to my art. So I could have Christmas designs that I'd previously done, or I could go to stock art and we could go over here and say, Hey, listen, let's just look for Christmas designs and we can come over here and look for Christmas designs. We can narrow that down if we want to by style. So if I wanted to see things that were, you know, had like organic or maybe look like patches or, or maybe, I don't know if there's anything retro in there. We might have a retro Christmas design. You never know. Millennial okay. Christmas art. Uh, millennial. I don't even know what that would look like. But um, you can go and narrow down by, you know, you know, classic, or if it's going to be circular, or if it's going to be, um, have rhinestones in it, you can look by all the different kind of looks to, to create the looks. And the thing that's really cool about it is you can also go down here and look by something really specific. So like, if you wanted to type in Christmas tree, then you could look at Christmas tree, or you could just go to the Christmas category. It's up to you. I'm just going to do generalized Christmas. And we're going to pick a few designs that I like that I think might look good 
on an ornament. And we might actually incorporate a photo into one of these. So let's do that. So I like that one. It's kind of the circular type stuff looks good on ornaments. Ooh, that looked really nice. Love that. That one might be interesting. Let's see here. I could never thought about doing a crazy Christmas sweatshirt on an ornament. That could be kind of fun. Um, let's see. So we got all kinds of different options here. We um, call them ugly sweater Christmas here. Yeah, yeah. We did a whole series of those. Those actually. So we're just going to add these files in here. This is this is what Anita would be looking at on her phone. This is what you guys are going to look at as soon as these get showcased in the in the art approval. And then the other thing that I would do is I would go in here and reorder these. So maybe I want to show one that I really like first. So I'm going to go over here and um, you know push that one to the top. So let's say, I, I kind of dig that one. That's kind of fun. That's really cute actually. So we're going to push that to the top. And if we want, we can change background color. So we can just click on it. We can do that right in the app. I could be doing this on my phone. So maybe we wanted to, probably Christmas tree ornament is probably going to be on white. So we're, we're actually just going to cop out and put it on white. So it has a white background. Um, but I don't know, can you sublimate onto some of the colors? I mean, I think all the Christmas or ornaments are going to be white, right, David? Yeah, they, they are. Um, so, so no color things. Some of the shirts are colored. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen here is Anita is going to, be, look at this and she's going to find the design she likes and I'm kind of steering her into this one because I like it and then Anita's going to go to the comment right on her phone and she goes love this one one can you put faith community church choir with the photo of the church yeah why not might be fun. And she sends me a message. I'm notified by email, but I'm also notified in the app that there's a comment. And then I'm like, sure, I can do it as soon as I get home. So we're doing this like right there while we're chatting with each other at the event. And the coolest part is to initiate the editing of this file, not a big deal because I can do it right from the art approval. So I can just go over here and just click on the design and say, hey, you know what, download that. And we're just going to suck that design down and then we're going to go in and we're going to localize it. And so if you're using Adobe Illustrator, it's going to open up in Illustrator. If you're using CorelDRAW, it's going to open up in CorelDRAW. Now, this particular design has a weathered overlay. And for, I, I would think for a Christmas tree ornament, I think it's going to kind of fog the small text. And so probably what we're going to do is get, just get rid of that overlay. And then what we're going to do is just kind of change this to the name of the choir. So over here, we're gonna to go to edit text. And then we're just gonna go down here and where it says reindeer, we're gonna type in faith and where it says sleigh rides, community church. And then what we wanna do here is cause this is text on a path. We just wanna make this smaller. So we probably wanna bring that down to maybe like 72 points, 48 probably about 60 points, probably. Probably gonna look, and you wanna spell it, right? So that's what spell check is for. So church, so there's a faith community church, looks good. And this is all editable. So, you know, if you wanna move this up and move it off the path and change it, you can do all that. Okay, so warm blankets, hot cocoa, where it says apple cider choir. Why not? That's kind of fun. And I think it needs a photo. So they are like, yeah, you know, we need a photo of the church in here. So let's go up on the, onto the interweb and then we'll just do a little church image, Google search. And um, wow, that's a really cool old school church there. So I kind of dig that. And we're just gonna right click and don't do this to Shutterstock. So probably wouldn't recommend doing that with Shutterstock because but you'd have a real actual image. And what we want is right in here, we wanna have the church in here. Now there's an interesting way of doing this and this is a crawl thing. So it may or may not work, it just depends on how this file is selected. But if we go over here and we go to the smart fill tool, we should be able to click inside of that. Well, it's not gonna let us do it because it's an open path. So I think what we're gonna do is just draw a little circle in here where we want the church to go. And we're gonna make it so it's a little, it's gonna eventually, it's gonna be behind here. So it kind of masks off. 
And for hey, right Craig. now, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we got a question here. Can your uh, graphics flow work with uh, Silhouette? No. Um, the, the artwork has to be edited in a professional graphic design program. So it doesn't work with like the consumer level programs. And the reason for that is the types of things like text envelopes and effects and weather to things like that, effects and things like that aren't supported in the Silhouette software. Because remember the Silhouette software is designed for working in two dimension with um, primarily with vector graphics for like vinyl cutting, right? So in order to do like what we're gonna do right here, which is a power clip, you wouldn't be able to do that in Silhouette. And I'll show you what I mean. If I'm just gonna make this right now orange, just so we can see what's going on here. And remember that little church that we're gonna do? This would be, this is why people use like an Illustrator Corel Draw. If, if I take this file, I can drop it over the top here and say power clip inside. And then what I can do is I can say edit power clip, and then I can manipulate this so we could get the church exactly where we want. This is like a professional graphics feature that you would see in Adobe Illustrator or Corel. And when you're done, just say finish. So there's our little design and I can go to object order and we'll just push it to the back of the page. So it kind of masks off and there's our little design. And if we want this to be bigger, it's a vector graphic. So guess what? We can make it bigger. So I think it looks kind of cool. So one thing that we want to do, David, Color correction. Let's talk about color correction. Your thoughts on that? Well, if you're trying to match a particular color, the key is to print a color chart and sublimate it and then pick your colors from that. Then reopen the chart and pick those colors and change them in your artwork. That's um, correct. So that would be the best way to match um, expected colors. Um, if your client is corporate and they're asking you know, colors through Pantone, you'll need a Pantone solid coded book. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll need to find the color in the book that the client is asking for and choose that color. You cannot wing it. You can't sort of guess based on what your screen looks like that you've done the job. You need to buy the book. Yeah, um, and what David was talking about is this is in that smart designer add-on software for Corel, we have a whole section on color. And so one of the things, the color palette that David um, always recommends is Pantone Go for doing sublimatable products. And so we have a little shortcut here in smart designer where if we click on this right here, Go, it will turn that palette on. And you know, that's the Go palette I have turned on. I also have the Pantone solid coded palette turned on because that's a common one for heat transfer, screen printing, embroidery threads, vinyl graphics, all, yeah, for, all the paint. for solid yeah. color. And solid then, colors, yeah. And then our red, our favorite red chart, do you have that somewhere? I think I do have that one in here. I can't remember if we added it, but I do actually have that on my system. So you, have to, dig, you have to dig a little bit to find that one in Corel, but um, both of those are available as a print chart in the support section of our website. Um, yeah, they are, and what... What I just did here actually is I opened up the Pantone Go chart, which is now incorporated into Smart Designer. And it's a, it's a pretty big chart. It's got a lot of colors and it. it's multi-page. But when you, you talk about what David was talking about, what I would do is I would print out the green page. And let's say this was going on a vaporware shirt um, or what, whatever it's going on. And then I would go to that chart and I would say, okay, what color green are we really trying to nail? And I would like this green to be this uh, Pantone 111. Uh, right here. So this this number right here, that's the one we want is 111, um, 17. Okay, so what we would do is we'd want to recolor this file. And I would just, this is how I'd probably do it. Probably want to not do it with the, the photo in here first, and because it, it's going to try to recolor that photo. So we're going to put the photo back in there in a second. In fact, let's just take the photo and just move it over here because if we scan the design right now, it's going to pick up all the colors in the photo and we don't want to recolor the photo. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in here and we're going to go to modify colors and all the colors in the design are right here. And then we're going to say swap. So we'll click on swap. And this is where we'd go to the Pantone Go chart and we would type in the color name 111 what is it, one seven right here. And then we just click on okay, and then it's just gonna recolor in there. Now it's, it moved that color forward in the object order. So we wanna recolor that to white, but now we know exactly what that color is gonna look like. And there's there can be no mistake. And so the reason I segregated this out 
into the out of the design is uh, I'll show you why I did that. If if I don't do that, it's going to pick up all the colors right here. If I rescan this, it's going to pick up all the colors in the photo too. So that's kind of handy because you can recolor the photo this way. So we're going to see how it picked up all the shades in the photo right there. So cool. if we had a green that's in there, we could we could swap and, that out and, too. And uh, to clarify one thing, Craig is we're dealing with two Pantones. Pantone Go, Pantone Solid Coated, they are unrelated, um, meaning your clients would specify their colors uh, typically with Pantone Solid Coated. That's what the book is. Yep. And then you what you're it. doing is you're decorating using Pantone Go, which is a palette in Corel, and you could use it with other programs. You could use it with Silhouette. Um, yeah, you could. Absolutely. And, and you're going to, that's a process color palette where Pantone is a, uh, a solid color. And so Correct. solid color palettes like Pantone, uh, solid coated, do not have a accurate process color number. So they can't really be used accurately. You have Correct. to go through this procedure to match colors. Yeah, and one of the things I just did, I just went and added a glitter vinyl effect to this, kind of make it look kind of like glitter, which I thought would be kind of fun. Cool. And then the other thing we're going to do is we can ungroup the graphical elements here, and maybe we want to put a little dimension on these. So I'm going to go down here, and um, we're going to just put a bevel effect on this. So it adds a little dimension to the leaves. So they look a little bit more 3D. These are all smart designer features. So we can add infinitum, go in here and, and add all kinds of functionality to the graphic. And we can do that on the text as well. So if we wanted the text to look like glitter, I guess we could do that so too. But go, going back to Silhouette for a second. So even though Silhouette is a pseudo vector program, you're, you're saying with the artwork you have there, it's, it's not a good candidate for editing? Correct, because, okay, so one of the things that both Adobe Illustrator and CorelDRAW both have is what's called text on a path and enveloping. So enveloping, I'll show you what enveloping is. This is this is enveloping. And this is a very important thing when you're interacting with templates. So if I go over here and I type in mobile, right? And I want to add, you know, well, this, these are all DAS fonts. The graphics flow, you, you get hundreds of fonts, even all those fun home decor scripty fonts that are so popular right now, right? And I think Mobile should have purple because you know, always have that kind of Mardi Gras thing going on, okay? Yep. Env enveloping is this. It's these live distortions to the text, okay? You see what I'm doing? This, this is still live text. That's a feature of Corel. That's a feature of Adobe Illustrator. We're automating that feature in Smart Designer. So we're automating, but this is something that's really important when we create templates. That feature isn't supported in Silhouette. So the other things like um, doing gradients and blends and all these kind of high tech effects, like for instance, the effect I'm going to do right here, this is something that's a smart designer effect. So I'm just going to go down here to outline effects and we're going to go to effects for printing and we're just going to add an effect to this. This is an effect that we couldn't reproduce in the Silhouette software because Silhouette is designed really for simple colors. It's designed to drive a vinyl cutter, right? Solid colors, films. It's not designed to be a, like a full scale graphic software, if that makes sense. And so what I just did there, you know, I've been doing graphics for a long time. Um, not a lot of people have the graphic skills to create that effect because that effect probably has, you know, 15 or 20 different production steps, all the different layers and the drop shadowing and all that. That's a, that's a smart designer thing. We just clicked on what we wanted and we created that effect. So the one thing that we definitely want to do is we want to, do we have a blank ornament on Condi Systems um, website? Do we have a, a blank photo on there, David? Sure. You, know? um, you can go type in uh, K, um, um, 202 or something like that. Um, just hit Probably enter. type in them. Probably hit ornament too, I bet. Um, just type in ornament. Okay, so we're just going to go to Condi's website. We're going to go to ornament. And let's see here. So we can pull that one up. Porcelain, that's kind of cute, actually. I like that one. All right, so we're going we're gonna to grab this one. And then all I'm going to do is right-click on it, and we're going to copy it. Okay, so we're just going to copy that ornament and... Let's just paste it in here into this document right here. 
And if I want, I can crop out the edges. So in crawl, I can just go down here and crop the edge out if I want. This is a little white boundary box on there. Don't really need to do that, but you could do that. Um, if you wanted to make it look a little bit more white, um, is this kind of the color that it would normally be, David? Is that pretty accurate? Yes. Okay. So, but you always have the ability, like in Corel, if you want to go in and, you know, make adjustments to brightness and, and all that kind of stuff, you can do that right in Corel. And you would do that typically, um, by adjusting all the, the bitmap properties. And because Corel is a full service graphics program and it works with bitmaps as well as, um, not just with, um, the, the, uh, you know, vector-based image. So if I went into like the image adjustment lab right here and I decided I wanted to kind of do a little split screen action here and just kind of see what's going on and, you know, auto adjust the image. Oop, don't want to do that. Um, but maybe we want to brighten it up a little bit and maybe change the contrast a little bit and maybe take a little bit of that green hue out of it. There we go. Once we get it done, we just click on, okay, that's like a crawl thing. And so what I want to do with this is I want to set an image area that's going to be my imprint area. And this is, this is how we're going to, we're going to actually add this product blank to the virtual samples feature in Smart Designer. So I just went over here to virtual samples. I believe I have a folder for Condi systems. I think I do. Yep, I do. And we're just going to select that ornament. And there's a little button here called placement. And this is your image area right here. This is going to be our image area. And I'm just going to take this and we're going to drag and drop it in here. And do you remember the part number, David? Um, I don't. Sorry. Okay. We'll, we'll just call it ornament heart and we're going to save it. Okay. So there's our little heart ornament right there and we've saved it. So that's stored in my product blanks now. So if I want to do a mock-up of this little um, community church design, I can just click on it and the mock is going to happen there. I want to take the white out of that. I just thought of that for a second. So let's go and remove the white layer. And that's going to help a little bit. That would not print when we wouldn't have to worry about for printing, but for, for the presentation purposes, we definitely want to get rid of that white and we're going to change that to red. There we go. Right, so there's our design because your sublimation printer is going to print the, the background color is going to come in there. Now, what you could do if you wanted to get tricky, you could just sample the foreground color and then just recolor re that to the background. I think that actually looks cool. And we can make this bigger, smaller. And the fun part is now if we, if we ungroup this, we really want to design this for this particular product. Look at, you come over here, you know, now we can, you know, why not? Let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, let's go and take this and then let's kind of nudge that over a little bit. So that might be good. And we can really compose this to fit onto this ornament because we're actually designing it on this blank. So let's go ahead and save it. So we're going to save that. I got a little Condi folder set up here and we'll say faith community ornament. Um, might be fun to print this on a t-shirt too, if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it on the ornament for now. And so we want to get it over to Anita. We want Anita to be able to look at it. And Anita is probably going to have some very specific requests and things that she might want to change. And, but we want to at least get the initial go around where she kind of sees it and then she can start interacting with me. And, and the reason we, we kind of want her to interact with me is now we're, we're, we're engaging her in the creative process. So we just locked out the competition. Competition's locked out. She's, she's contributing now. She's saying, I want this, I want that. Um, that's exactly what we want to do. And what, what I want to do to have her look at the proof, I'm actually going to create a little PNG proof here um, in PNG format. That is really the very best format for um, internet proofing. It's high resolution. Um, you can knock the background out. They look great. So I'm just going in here and we're just going to export this out as a PNG file. And we're going to do our little mock-up here. And I'll, anytime I do that, I always want to have a transparent background. So we're going to do a transparent background and then let's get it in front of Anita. So what I, I could add it back to this particular art approval. I can just add it back. I can just say, hey, listen, let's upload the file and let's just add it back to this art approval. Could do that. So I could go over here and just add it. But I think what I'd be more inclined to do 
send her a fresh art approval with just the graphics. I think that's what I'd be more inclined to actually do. And so let's do that. So let's just set up a separate art approval. And then we're just gonna call this one Faith Community. And so we're just gonna create a new art approval. We're gonna call it Faith Community. I'm gonna reuse that Christmas art approval. Um, I'm gonna take Anita off of that and use that as a showcase when I'm working with other clients on Christmas ornaments. I'll probably put the design I had Anita, you know, I'll leave that in there so people can see that as an example. Faith community ornament. And we'll add her back in there, which. There we go. You guys are probably gonna want this link in here. We'll put this link in here. You guys can have access to this one. There you go. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna upload the artwork. So a couple different ways to do it. I could do a direct upload. That would be easy enough to do. Just do a direct upload right into this particular um, um, art approval. But what I would wanna do instead is I'd wanna go and create a folder for Faith Community and upload it into a folder. And why do I wanna do that? Because that way I have all the art assets for Faith Community in one place. Anybody in the organization can share them. My computer blows up, I've got a backup and super easy to, to do that. I'm just gonna go down here to Faith Community and I'm just gonna bulk upload these files. So select them all, boop, bulk upload them. There they are. And then let's add them to that art approval. Super easy to do that. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna add this one right here. And then we're gonna add the PNG file right here. And we're just gonna add that to the art approval. Right there, just gonna add it. And now you guys, if you refresh your browsers, you're gonna be able to take a look at that art. Now, here's the thing. Do you trust the person on the other end to not take this over to somebody else? That's the big question. And in some cases, yes, in some cases, no. So what I'm gonna do on this graphic right here, I'm just gonna click on it. And because this is high, this is high resolution. Here's my coworker. Welcome. I believe that is how you spell Corel. So, um, I suppose Craig has walked away here. I'm sure he'll be back in just a second. So as far cupcake, as Tom, cupcake is uh, barking at the painters, is there cupcake? Ah. Come over here, come over here, sweetie. Okay, so I'm gonna one, one hand pet the dog, and the other hand we're gonna add a watermark over here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over here and we're gonna change that background color, and we're gonna make it kind of more accurate to the the color that's in the the actual design there. It's pretty close, maybe a little bit lighter. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is add a, a watermark. So I'm gonna go over here and add a watermark and I can do a light combination of colors or dark. So let's see what it looks like. So we're gonna do a dark combo right here and just say text. This is what it's gonna look with a dark watermark. I'm trying to pet her, she's not liking it. Or we can do light. And I think that's gonna look a lot better actually. Okay, gotcha. So this is a nice little security net so that then she can go bark at them in the other room. It this makes it a little bit more difficult. Yep. So it makes it a little, now if I go back to dark, it's gonna be a lot harder for them to steal this. So there you go. There you go. So this is watermark. The other one, I'm not so worried about the other one because it's a lot smaller right here. So this is a lot smaller. So I'm not particularly worried about that one, but I could watermark that as well. So Anita gets this, she takes a look at it and she says, looks great. Looks great. Can we make the church bigger? You can definitely do that. And I could go in and make the church bigger, upload the fresh version, and then I can just resend it to her. And to resend it, all I have to do is just go to resend on the art approval and we're ready to roll. So we're just gonna go share and then resend it. And then 
boom, it's going right out to her. So when she's ready to sign off on it, all she's going to do is say approve, approve, and here's where it gets good. Okay, so this is the, the kind of the default dis disclaimer here. And the dis default, hang, hang on one second, let me... Uh, Ah, the joys of working at home. Well, Bo and I are here at the office today. So, um, Bo, what about uh, maybe bringing in Baron to sort of be my little live sidekick? Um, so, Craig is really the master of of artwork um, when it comes to you know using the the huge library at graphics flow um a lot of so, stuff yeah so uh, the painters are gone but the dog is still hang on that craig it's not bad you know it's not too bad So the moral of the story is sell pet products, right? Right, Rodeo Bo? All right, so let's kind of go through what, what this is right here. Review, review our terms and conditions. So what we're saying here is we strive, strive to display as accurately as possible the colors of products shown on this website. Do the inconsistencies of various display monitors. The color you see on your screen may not be a totally accurate reproduction of the actual product. Screen images are intended as a guide only and should not be regarded as absolutely correct when approving you're acknowledging this fact and waive any claim of disfaction due to color. But here's the big one. All designs represented on the artwork showcase are the intellectual property of Craig's Creations LLC. You're welcome to comment on any of these designs, but you're not permitted to take these designs to other vendors due to copyright restrictions. And they have to click through that. And I don't know, you know, I hear, I talk to customers every day and people have flexible business ethics. And what I mean by that is you do these designs for people, and this is a customized ornament design. They might take this over and shop it to somebody else. Hey, can you do the same thing? Cause they can get it a nickel cheaper. If they do that, you put them on warning that, you know, they don't own the copyright. As soon as you watermark this, this created legally binding copyright. You have stamped it with a copyright. This has got a date and timestamp if you ever had to go to court that you wouldn't this would be legally admissible as evidence to this copyright it proves that you created it originally it has your copyright indication on it tells them when they approved it and you're going to be like hey anita we've got to we've got to have a little chat because you took my ornament over to somebody else and you don't have the copyright to that image and so that's yeah. part of the process in doing um you know art approvals is doing just that is utilizing the the capabilities of watermarking to also put the client on notice about copyright. And, you know, I wish it wasn't an issue, um, but it is. And so in your, go ahead, David. Well, we're, we're at uh, 149. So maybe we reach a, a, a stopping point. So we'll have questions. Perfect. Okay. So let me just kind of wrap up by saying this. When you log into your graphics flow account, you have access to the massive library of tens of thousands of design templates from all of the digital art solutions collections, and then also the new artwork that gets added to the platform every month. So every single month, there's new artwork that is added. Um, it's all based on themes, that artwork, there's digital catalogs for that artwork. So this is a, a digital catalog. I think we have November is live right now. Um, and so this corresponds to the new artwork that is going to be added November 1st. This is kind of a sneak peek. And we'll always do artwork that's appropriate for that particular time of the year. So there's a, you know, kind of, you know, school related artwork. If you come back here and you go back to, let's say, September or even October, you're going to see like kind of fall back to school types of things and things of that nature. So we're, we always try to be kind of ahead of the the head of the game in terms of the artwork. And our, our team does, when we do work for people like Disney, Universal Studios, Cirque du Soleil, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, NCAA, Fanatics, some of the biggest um, apparel decorators and personalizers in the industry, we do contract work for those folks. So it's the same graphics team that's doing that. Um, and then you also have access to our massive library clip art, 
and then um, fonts. Fonts is something we're uniquely good at. Um, you know, if you were to buy any of the fonts and graphics flow, um, we sell them for $30 a piece. Um, there's 375, you download the master font set and all those fun home decor fonts that everybody loves so much are included. And then we, we just got done doing all the Marvel superhero fonts from um, Captain America to Iron Man to Guardians of the Galaxy. So that's another extra little bonus. So that, that's what a graphics flow account is, is gonna do for you, is gonna give you access to the industry's kind of premier collection of curated artwork for apparel decoration and personalization. It's gonna give you access to art approvals. It's gonna give you a way to archive your artwork, but here's the kicker. And you guys are gonna be the first people on the whole planet to see this. So drum roll, please, uh, drum roll, uh, please. Nobody else has seen this. Okay, this is Art Portal. This is a new feature that's being added to our graphics flow, what we call our pro plan. And Art Portal is a web page that is your URL, your logo can be configured. We'll give your customers the ability to go in and let's say it was a youth retreat, type in what they're looking for, look at the design, click on the design, add a notes for customization, add that to a cart and submit it Ooh. as an art approval. Like and that. nobody has done this before. And so when they submit it, you're getting an instant lead. You have their name, they, you have their email, their phone number, you know it's not a bot. It comes into your graphics flow account as almost like an order. You can click on that order and guess what you can do? Just click on that design, pop it into Smart Designer um, in Corel or pop it into um, Adobe Illustrator, localize it real quick and then pump it back to them as an art approval. Game on, orders being processed, done. And that also is gonna allow you to, um, you know, get a jump on, you know, the production side because you're getting the artwork out of the way and you're engaging the client in that creative process. So they're not shopping you all over the internet. You know, they know that in order to get that artwork, they have to go through you. So that is a new feature of the Graphics Flow Pro account. And every Condi um, customer that elects to sign up for Graphics Flow, we are going to give you guys an upgrade to a Pro account for six months free of charge. Just gonna include it. We have a special promo code. I'm gonna pump that through and then we'll do Q&A. And we'll Thank post you. it also. Um, and I'll send it to you via email. So here's the So the if promo you try code. it out for six months and it's not for you, you can back down? Well, here's the thing, there's no there's no contract. So the way the way we're gonna do it for your people, David, is is this. If they want it, if they sign up for graphics flow and they wanna try Smart Designer, all they're gonna have to do is sign up for one month of, of Smart Designer. You gotta have to have CorelDraw 2019, 2020, or 2021. To sign up for the first month of Smart Designer, we're gonna include that with your graphics flow account until April. Just gonna include it. We're gonna do that for all the Condi people. Just okay. gonna include it. You don't have to pay anything extra for Smart Designer. Um, you just pay the first month, we're gonna include it until April. If you start, sign up for a starter graphics flow account, which is 99 bucks a month, your, your Smart Designer is gonna be included in that. We're going to upgrade you to a pro account, which is 149 a month. We're going to upgrade you to a pro account for six months. You're just going to pay $99 a month for everything. It's just an incredibly good deal. There is no contracts. Um, people stay in graphics flow because it, it tends to become the kind of the foundation of how they handle the graphics side of their business. But art portal gets added mid November and every one of the Condi folks are going to have access to art portal, which is great. And we, we're, we're doing that partly because it's good marketing, but partly we know that if, if folks get committed to Art Portal, incorporated in their website or their social media or e-blast, it's a lead generator, right? And so it's what's bringing business in and everyone's looking for new customers right now. And this is a phenomenal way to do it. So I'll shut my, my mouth, I'll put my video, I'll stop sharing my screen here, and then I'll pop my video back on there so you guys can see my mug and then we'll answer questions. Okay. Thank you, Craig. I'm looking them over. Um, Rodeo Bo, what are you seeing? Hey, uh, Craig, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, is Graphics Flow live yet? Oh, well, Graphics Flow has um, been live since May. Okay. So the, the feature that isn't live is um, Art Portal. That's still in what we call QA. So what you guys are seeing is our internal web, web uh, page where we're doing all the testing on it. And so Graphics Flow Portal will go live mid-November. Cool. Um, and is there a uh, free trial version? 
There, there's no trial. You sign up. It's month to month. You sign up, and you. One of the things we always kind of joke about the sign-on bonus. If you you guys are going to sign up, you're going to have 200 downloads uh, for your first month, and you're going to get all of the graphics flow um, fonts. You can consider that being your sign-on bonus just for being in your first month. But yeah, there's no there's no there's no trial because it's a month to month subscription. And then how do people get this? Um, they sign up. So I included the sign up link in the chat there. I also yeah. included my email. So very important. If you want me to reach out to you personally, which I'm happy to do that. Um, if you want to put that in the chat, you're welcome to do that. And I will reach out to you personally, but you can also email me at Craig at graphicsflow.com. I'll send you a little information request. If you want to book me for a, a personalized meeting, you're welcome to do that. Um, the special, we are going to run that special, um, through the balance of the week. So if uh, we might extend it, but we're gonna run it through the balance of the week for all the webcast folks. Again, the promo code is Condi E6 M O U P. Um, it, I, I would personally would suggest if you're interested in graphics flow, what I would suggest is just booking me for a meeting and I can put my meeting link in there real quick. Um, Bo, go ahead. What was the, the next question? Um, is this a design resource website? Okay, so if you could, if you kind of look at it like this, if you had a professional graphic design team, I just talked to a client earlier today that has a professional graphic design team in-house, very professional company, very sophisticated. He has a whole group of designers. They come up with artwork for their clients. They pr propose it to them. They have different design templates. They have their own clip art library, their own font library, and they've been in business since the, the early 90s. So this gives you the equivalent of that capability. <laughs> because you have access to this massive library of content um, and the ability to easily locate it. And so not only is it a design um, depository where you have access to these amazing, all this amazing artwork, but it's also a sales enablement tool. So it helps you to get ideas in front of your clients, get them engaged in the sales process, get the art, artwork finalized. Because here's the thing, if you're talking to people about artwork, we haven't even mentioned pricing yet. Nobody's going to ask me what that ornament is. We get the artwork done first. Then they're like, how much is the ornament? Oh, it's 10 bucks. Oh, okay. We're not having this pricing, this commodity pricing discussion about how much are your ornaments? That's the last thing we want to do because they're not really even giving us an opportunity to prove that, you know, we could do something above and beyond on the graphic side. That's what makes the product more valuable. So yeah, and it, it is an is a art depository that gives you access to all these great graphics. It's also the ability to um, safely and securely store your files and share them in the cloud, and also as a sales enablement tool. And that is a great feature. Well, Craig, uh, anything else, Rodeo Bo? Uh, that, that's it. Well, Craig, again, uh, great presentation. I hope this has been helpful, and we're going to do it again in the near future. All right, so anybody that has any interest in getting more details on Graphics Flow, um, just go ahead and email me at Craig. C-R-A-I-G at graphicsflow.com. I put that in the chat. I also have my meeting link in there. If you want to book me for a meeting, you're welcome to do that. And David said, you're going to post this on the Facebook page as yep. well, correct? We are. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Craig. All right. Thanks. Take it's care. been a privilege. Thank you, everybody. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye.